Good morning, precious saints of the living God. It's good to see you this morning. Thank you for allowing me into your houses this morning. I am so excited once again to be with you right in your house this morning. I just want to find out, can you clearly see me? If you can see me, just uh, 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 give a like there or something so that I just can see uh, if you can clearly see me now. Uh, because I just want to find out there's something uh, going on. Okay, I can see. Okay, thanks so much. So we can we can continue. Well, I want to welcome each and every one of you this morning. And once again, I'm so, so excited about the Word of God. This morning, I am going to share with you some very, very important things that I believe is coming from God. Now, I like to be connected to what God is doing now, right now, all the time. I always want to find out from God, he must show me where he's going and what he is doing. <clears throat> and he was so faithful throughout all these years. Every time God has uh, shown to me what he is doing and where we are going, and I'm so excited about that when God is showing me these things. And I'm going to share with you this morning. First of all, I'm going to start with some prophecies that the Lord has given unto me through the years and some dreams. And, you know, on Friday, I was so, so shocked, if I may use that word, in my, in my heart uh, when I looked up my... Uh, my dreams uh, and my prophecies that I wrote down through the years to see how accurate it was in what was going what is happening right now all over the earth now I want to tell you this is a very very excited time that we are living in right now don't lose heart don't be disappointed God is still on the throne and he is busy with wonderful, glorious things that is happening now. And God is absolutely in control of our lives. And he is going to take us through it all by his power and his glory. Remember what I told you right through this lockdown that we had? I told you that God is going to reveal and he was revealing Christ. And he wants me to reveal Christ to you. And uh, he wants everyone to know the position of Christ and who he is. The glory of his riches. Well, that is so significant and that is so wonderful. In 2006, we had revival. I just want to mention this. In 2006, God gave us revival after years and years and years of praying for revival. And that was a wonderful thing that happened to us one day. Just as the re uh, revival started, I was uh, in prayer on the mountain and the Holy Spirit spoke to me and I wrote it down. And one thing that he said to me, and that was in the revival 2006, he said to me that God is going to reveal his true riches from heaven. He's going to reveal his kingdom. He's going to reveal Christ. He's going to reveal unto us the real silver and the real gold. And um, once he has done that, all of a sudden, he spoke to me and said these words, then the world as you know it will never be the same again. And I was shocked, you know, because I didn't know what it means. But now I understand that everything has changed and it will never be the same again. <clears throat> but this is exciting this morning. I'm going to talk to you about his presence, his image, and his presence, the foundation of the believer. Now, I want to start this morning giving you the dreams and, and some of the prophecies that the Lord has given unto me. I just want, in short, I want to share it with you so that you can see and understand and know that God is still in control and this is so wonderful. The first dream I had 
And you will remember because I told you this dream and I shared it with you. In, in 2017, I had a dream. And, you know, I, in my dream, uh, I heard these words that we were summoned to a meeting. We were summoned, the body of Christ was summoned to a meeting. And that everything was stopped. Everything was on pause. And uh, we were summoned to a meeting. And when we got there, I saw that there was not a lot of people. Now listen to me carefully. There were not a lot of people. And they, the people that was there, was just a few. And they were spread, or they were spread it out, standing in the place, in that specific place. Now I understand when I look back, when I saw that, that the people were just a few standing wide spreadly out in that specific place. That was speaking about the lockdown. Now, this is what happens there. I could see someone has written the words climate change on the wall. And I could read it climate change and then it concerns it, it came to me that <laughs> that climate change concerns the church and the world it concerns the church and the world i could sense that there were that we were there because there was a change in the spiritual climate the original design that they wore, the people wore throughout many years. The original design of their clothes changed as a result of the climate, of what was happening right there. Because they wore it on their clothes, the, there was words being written on their clothes and the and it was fading away as a result of the climate change in other words the things that they wore on their clothes was on their clothes but not in their hearts that's the reason why it was fading away and I heard a voice saying to me, listen carefully, I heard a voice saying to me, so say the apostle and designer of the real clothes. Now that was Jesus Christ. He, he, the Bible is talking about him as the apostle and the real designer, our apostle, the real apostle of the real clothes. And what he said could be seen on their clothes. So he spoke to me and the words that he spoke to me was not just words. When I looked at the people, uh, all that are standing there, I could see the words that he spoke was on their clothes. And I'm explaining to you uh, because of what I said, that it was written on their clothes. And what he said could be seen on their clothes. So I looked on the clothes, the words were on their clothes and <coughs> faded as faded away because it was not on their hearts and it was almost gone. I couldn't make out what those words were because they were fading away. I could barely make out the first word of the first two words on their clothes. I could barely make out what was standing there. Those words were power and authority, but it was almost gone. I had to turn into every direction to see it, meaning that the original was now fading away and the Holy Spirit, listen to this, the Holy Spirit dresses the body 
or cover it. The, uh, sorry, let me just read it again. It was fading away and the Holy Spirit who dresses the body or cover it is going to do something else and it is going to be revealed as a whole. The church has lost its authority and the power was almost gone. The rest of the clothes or the words on the clothes was integrity. Now listen to me carefully. Truth, faithfulness, discipline, honesty, holiness, and they were almost unreadable. Can you see that? It was, it changed. Now, and they were almost gone. Now the Holy Spirit are going to move beyond, and this is what he said to me. In this pause, what God is doing now, and now when I read this, I can see throughout these months, what was God saying to me? That he's bringing in something into the body that he wants them to know that will change everything in them. When he bring unto them the real clothes and the real things, the Holy Spirit are going to move beyond. He's going to move beyond the ordinary. The ordinary was that ordinary clothes and most of the people, they just wore everything on the outside. There's no power in it. That's why it's going to fade away. When, when the climate change, when the thing starts to happen in this world and everything changed, the things that are on their clothes that they wore on the outside will change. And that's what happened. Christianity that's on the outside changed. Words change. It's only the thing in the heart that really remains. And that is what the Lord was showing me. Now, he says that now the Holy Spirit is busy with a new thing. Beyond the ordinary. And that is exposing. And this is amazing. Exposing and revealing the body. Exposing and revealing the real thing. Real prophecies, real Christianity, real things that are coming from the heart. Because we cannot go on like this anymore. God has to reveal the, 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 the fake things so that people can understand. Because remember, God cares for his family. He cares for the church. He don't want the church to perish. And most of all, he wants the church to go to that special level in Christ where we come to the full measure of the statue of Jesus Christ himself. Now, what God is doing now is revealing all things all over the world that are wrong. And things has changed. It's not the same anymore. It's not going to be the same anymore. I can tell you that. That is why what is happening now. Now, he is exposing and revealing the body and bringing in a revelation of Christ, the real purpose of God. Telling us that the church, he wants the church to be clothed with Christ. The real Christ must be revealed in us. What is God's purpose? <coughs> and that will become the original cover of the church. If you cannot see this, you must be blind. Because God wants Christ, the revelation of him, to become the real or the original cover of who we are. Paul 1 says, he has chosen me to reveal Christ in me. That is amazing. Let me read the scripture to you. 
in Romans chapter 8. Listen to what he says here. Paul is saying something here, what is going to happen to the saints, to the sons of God. In verse 16, he says, uh, sorry, verse 18, chapter 8, verse 18, he says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. The glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. Now, what he says here is the glory which shall be revealed in us. And God has spoken to me. He said to me that that glory is the riches of his glory. Christ which is the riches of his glory, the glory of God. That's why he says in Ephesians chapter 1, that we may know that we must receive the spirit of revelation, that we may know what is the riches of his glory, of his inheritance in the saints. God, I've got news for you this morning, saints. God is busy revealing Christ. And he's revealing Christ in the church. He has to do it. And then at the end, the whole glory shall be revealed through the sons of God. Notice, he, he doesn't say through the children of God, <coughs> but the sons of God. Because the sons is God's original design or original original purpose that he will brought forth sons through Christ who is the son of God. The son of God came to this earth to bring in many sons. And if we don't understand what is going on right now, we are in trouble. We will never understand what God is doing. And the Spirit reveals it unto us now. That's why it is important for, for us to talk about these things. You know, they don't want to hear it. And I am so sad in my heart. <coughs> They're going to miss it. They, you know what they want to do? They want to stay in the same level, on the same level, on the same thing, on the same things all over again. Every time the same old record over and over and over and over again. And there's no growth. They don't exceed in the knowledge of Jesus Christ, which is very, very important. Remember, he's coming for a church that are matured. <coughs> he's coming for a church that has grown to the full measure of the statue of Jesus Christ. Understand this. But they don't want to hear it. You know what the most want to hear? It's going to be well with the flesh. It's going to be well tomorrow morning. It's going to be well next year. They want all the things of the flesh. Motivate me today. Just tell me it's going to be good. Listen to me. All things are included in Christ. He is. Christ. Is responsible for us. He is the one that will bring it to pass in our lives. Well, I'm saying this. It's important that I tell you. What did he say to them? He said to them. Why do you look at all these things. In life. Clothes? Why do you look at all the necessities of life? Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things, these things shall be added unto you. There is more important things than the world now. We have come to a stage in this world where everything has reached a point where it's uncontrollable in this world. Can't you see that? 
Right is wrong. And wrong is right. And nobody cares anymore. But we are the light. Remember what he said to me last week that I shared with you? Just shine. There's something to it. God has taken us step by step by step telling us, you are so fortunate to hear this. Because this thing is going to help you and let you grow into what God has planned for us. Now listen to what he said to me back in those days when I received this dream. He said, Christ, or the original one, the purpose will become the original cover. He said, the apostolic anointing. That's why he said at the beginning that the apostle, the apostle and the designer of the clothes. That's why he said this, the apostolic anointing which is connected to the age of the Spirit. The apostolic anointing is connected to this specific age that we are living in, the age of the Spirit, what the Spirit is doing. Revealed truth, which is revealed truth. The apostolic ministry anointing will reveal the truth you cannot get past that it will restore to the original to what is real and it's not it's never easy it's not going to fall easily on people they have to change it is the it's the eternal purpose of god the original design are being kept in position by the word and the climate are being controlled by prayer. Remember what I told you three weeks ago that he spoke to me in my heart. All of a sudden I heard these words. The wind of the glory of God begins to blow. Everything God speaks means something. And he, he reminded me. Keep me in line. The wind of the glory of God begins to blow. And then I heard the sounds of prayer must fill the air. You will remember I said it to you. The sounds of prayer will fill the air. Now listen, here he said to me in 2060. The original design are being kept in position by the true word that is being brought to you. The true word of truth and the climate, what we are going to do now in this time, what God is doing now, are being controlled by the prayer, our prayer lives, what we are doing. This is amazing. Now, on Sunday, uh, sorry, on It was, I think it was about the 13th or the 14th of the 11th month of 2019, November 2019. <coughs> this is what the Holy Spirit spoke to me. Listen what he said to me. Now, remember what I told you, that he's taking us every year, step by step, telling us these truths to remind us. Remember what I've told, uh, uh, told you about uh, the original truth, the, the, the vision that I just read to you and showed you. Now here in 2019, in November, listen to what he said to me. I heard this, these words in my dream. I dreamt and I heard these words. The Holy Spirit beyond the ordinary. Can you see that? How faithful God is. The Holy Spirit is the one that is going to reveal the seed. Hallelujah. Revealing the designer of the heavenly home. <laughs> I've forgotten about those. 
When I read it, I was so shocked in my spirit how accurate the Lord is, revealing the designer of the heavenly home, the heavenly body, the design of perfection. And then I heard him said, he explained to me, he said to me, the real apostle activates the prophetic. And the real prophetic activates the evangelist. And the real evangelist activates the pastor. And the real pastor activates the teacher. And they are all connected as the hand of Christ, the hand of God. That are active in this world. Which bring to pass God's eternal purpose. This is amazing, say. Hallelujah. And we can find it. I've preached this word to you every Sunday. And then he said to me, it is graduation time. <laughs> it is graduation time. The greatest <coughs> of his power or the greatness of his power is going to be revealed in us. Which is the Holy Spirit beyond the ordinary. Which is God in the completeness of his being. That which is a thing when it's come to its fullness, a thing of its fullness. His virtues and excellencies. Christ on display. Christ being revealed. An exhibition of the heavenly Rehom, an exhibition of the glory of Christ, the real silver and the gold. They, they desire the gold and the silver of this world. But he told me back in 2006 on the mountain when we had revival, he said to me, they wanted the gold and the silver, but the time will come that the real gold and the silver will be explained and even the gold and the silver of this world will recognize the source of the gold and the silver. This is amazing because everything will fall in line with God's word. Everything was being given for us, but God wanted everything to come in line and he wants his church to move into the realm of the levels of Christ. Because it's not about us. It's about Christ Jesus. It's about who he is. It is about what he has accomplished. It is about what he has done for us. And then he called it, I heard the words, he called it what is going to happen and what's happening. The blessing of Christ. Before they have said the blessing of Christ is all the money and possessions and all kinds of things. But not so. God is going to reveal the real and is revealing now the real blessing of Christ which has come through justification and righteousness. Isn't that amazing? No wonder when this lockdown started, just two months into the lockdown, he spoke to me once again in a dream and he said to me, he gave unto me a cell phone, like what I'm doing now. And he said to me, Preach unto my people and open 
the gates of righteousness. What he was telling me is, reveal unto them Christ, because Christ is the gates of righteousness. Reveal unto them Christ. And he said to me, just wait, they will come. And then he said, I will stop the wind. I will stop the wind of doctrine. I will stop the, 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 the wind of falseness and all kinds of things. And I will bring my glory. I will reveal Christ. That is what he said to me. That is the blessing of Christ. Demonstrating the transition of the saints out of darkness and now you must listen to me carefully. Out of darkness into His light. Remember last week what, what I told you? I heard the words on Friday, the week before. And, and on Sunday morning, I was preaching on it. <coughs> Remember what He said? Just shine. Because darkness tried to take over this world. But I want my church... My body to shine, just shine. I've preached it to you last Sunday. And here, here in, in 2019, he said to me, he's going to demonstrate the transition of the saints out of this darkness that tried to take over into the real light, the kingdom of his son, the knowledge of the glory of God which is in the face of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amazing. Then afterwards, God has given me another one. And let me quickly read it to you. When I was in prayer this morning, that was in, in, in the lockdown, and I... I wanted to pray for the people. I wanted to pray for this thing to stop. I wanted to pray for this whole lockdown thing. But I couldn't receive the, the, the liberty in myself to pray that morning. That's why I was concerned in my heart and I prayed when I spent time with the Lord. And I wrote down here, while I was in prayer this morning, I could not pray for the pandemic to go away. I could not. God didn't allow me to pray for that. And then I heard these words, those that have an ear, let them hear, let them hear, let them hear. My desire to speak has come. Now is the time. This is what he said to me. Now is the time. I have not seen this thing that came upon this world. But the enemy did. I'm going, and listen here, I'm going to shine with my light. Can you see how it is connected to the last week? The words that God gave it to me. <clears throat> that was in the beginning of the lockdown. I'm going to shine with my light in the midst of this thing. To reveal the heart's of all and especially my church there's going to be a shifting in this time of pause and I have to do this to reveal the hearts of all and especially my church to show what is really in their hearts I will rise with my fullness. I will rise with my potential. I hope this means something to you. If you are in the same, on the same as I am this morning, truly, this will really do something for you. You know what it means when God says, I will, I will show you, I will rise with my potential. My fullness. We need to rejoice. Saints. 
We need to jump for joy. I will restore my order and my will in my real church. Well, it's happening now. It's you mark my words. Let it be written. Let it be done. You mark my words. This is not my own. It's coming from God. It's going to happen. God is going to reveal his real church. The others will be blown away because they don't want to change. They don't want it. They want their own thing, their own mind, their own thing. They want their thing to be done. I will provide the real source of life and glory. Dishonesty and corruption will fall <coughs> in the presence of my beauty and excellency. That's why I want to say a few words of his presence this morning. Because this is what the Lord has given to me on Friday. He says, talk to, uh, talk to my people about my presence. And here is the prophecy. We are all in line with it. The Lord has given to me that morning at the beginning of this lockdown. Dishonesty and corruption will fall in the presence. In the pre <laughs> God is going to reveal his presence. How is he going to bring us to that place? By revealing his presence that is in us. His beauty and excellency. Mark my words. The church that is going to come forth now. Will move. In his presence. And excellency. Why God has connected me to the prophetic. I don't know. But my whole life. Which I have dedicated to God. He has always. Always. Moved me with the prophetic and has spoken in the prophetic with my own life. I'm not claiming that I'm a prophet. Because there are so many that are prophesying wrong things. I just want to be in line with his word. And you mark my words, God is going to reveal his excellency, his beauty. Because of the presence that is in us. The pure. This is what he said to me. The pure shall remain. You see why God didn't want me to pray that this lockdown must go away? Because he wants to reveal in this time all these things. That's why he didn't want me to pray. I couldn't feel to pray for this. And still up to this time, I could not feel to pray that this thing must go away. God said it's not him giving this. But God has always overruled Satan's plans. Always destroyed him. Because Satan has nothing in him. As a result of this what is happening. Many shall come in. God's plan is for many to come in saints. Many to come in. Many shall come in. And many shall fall away. Sadly. The fear of the Lord shall once again be restored. In my church forever. And those. Listen to this. And those in the light. Shall. And will shine brighter. Now this God gave unto me at the beginning. Of the lockdown. And remember last week. I said to you. He spoke to me on Friday. The week before that Friday. That on Sunday. Last Sunday morning I preached to you. He said just shine. Listen to what he says. And my church. Those in the light. Shall and will shine brighter. Than ever before. You need to rejoice. You need to rejoice. <laughs> Those that have that are defiled shall even more be defiled. And the desire of me shall come again. Did you know that the past 
many years, there was no desire for God anymore. <coughs> There's a pretension what that was going on. People pretended to be Christians. But we could see that there's no real desire because they don't want to be busy with the things of God. The desire of me shall come again. I told you before, said God to me that day, that morning, that the gold and the silver belongs to me. Even they, the gold and the silver, will hear the voice of the source. I will release the glory of my riches and God confirmed it over and over and over. Now let me quickly say something about the presence before I stop this. <laughs> I love God. I love his word. I love you. I love the church. I love his people. I have given myself a long time ago. For God's people, for God's church, for the body of Christ. I had to pay many prices until now for this specific thing that God is sharing through me now with you. God spoke to me, my heart once again on Friday about the truth of the presence of God. You know, many will say, you know, many in the church, you, can, you will hear, they tell you, start your morning with the presence of God. Get filled with His presence every morning. And then they say, get filled with faith. Start with faith and all kinds of things. But God said to me on Friday, tell my people that my presence has never left my presence is in them. This is one of the things that I am about to share with them and show to them and reveal unto them. That they cannot be a new creation without my presence. Because my presence is Christ in them, the hope of glory. My presen presence is Christ. You cannot tell people that they must go into the presence of God. The presence is already in us. God stay in us. He's within us. He dwells in us. He wants you to know the truth about His presence. And I'm telling you this morning, saints. It's extremely important for you to know this. And then He said to me, ask my dear people, ask my children. What are you? And who are you? That you can answer for yourself this morning. What are you? Who are you? Do you really know? After you have received Christ? You know what you are? You are a new creation. On the inside. I'm not talking about the flesh. Because this thing is going to perish. If Christ is not coming, this outside man is going to perish. But if Christ comes and this body is still uh, alive, he, the Holy Spirit will change this body and clothe it with my heavenly home. <coughs> but now, I understand that I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus and you are created in Christ. Understand this. You will be taken and created in Christ Jesus as one being. You have become a joined spirit with Christ. You will never be without His presence. Otherwise, you are not a new creation. Don't look for His presence. When we step into a church building, the presence is not coming from some place else, but it's coming from the body. From the children of God. Because the Holy Spirit is in us. And sometimes when we are in tune with God and we are flowing and under the anointing, it becomes greater and bigger in us. And there's more of the anointing that is being released. Just think for yourself. 
the more you have spent in his presence with him and, 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 and spend time with him, the more being released out of you, rivers of living waters will flow out of your belly. Reverse, not a river, reverse. That is a promise. Why? Because He lives in us. Christ in us, the hope of glory. You are a God being on the inside. Whether you like it or not, I'm not talking about your flesh. He's going to change that. It's going to be resurrected. But your new man, the hidden man of the heart, is a God being created in him. When is the time that God's church is going to understand this? It will help you to be triumphant. When we come to Him and be created in Christ Jesus, we become a God being created in, in Him. This is only possible when we are one with Him. And have him in us. It's only possible when that happens. You cannot go to heaven unless you're one with him. That is what God has purposed for this age. To raise up a body that looks like his son and become one with his son. And call them sons. It's more than just an earthy son. It is one that is, is conformed to his image. If you don't know this, listen to me, saints. Listen to me. If you don't know this, if you don't know this, how will you ever be able to bear fruit? You can only bear God's type of fruit. When you know this, when you are one with this, because the fruit of Christ that is being bare through Christ is supernatural. It can only be born. It can only come forth out of a new man, which is one with Christ. How are you ever going to bear fruit? His fruit. Because if you don't know this, people that are looking for His presence all the time, when they are moving into His presence with emotional things, <coughs> then it's the only time they can bear fruit. And when it's gone, the fruit is gone. Hear me? It's just on the outside. With other words, it will come and go. As you feel the presence. But I don't need to feel the presence with my body. I don't walk by, by, by sight. I don't walk by feelings. I know that he lives in me. He will never leave me, forsake me. I bear fruit all the time. And if I don't bear fruit, the Holy Spirit tells me you are in the wrong position. Get into the right position. Because I know He's in me. He's, he will never, His presence is in me. I don't have to look for His presence. You don't have to come and go. It's something that is in me and stays in me. He now reveals the hearts of the church. Now in this moment, mark my words, He's revealing the hearts. Of those that are in the church. If they are real. And honest. God is now busy. <laughs> for a short. And it's going to be a short time. Because time is gone. For a short time. Giving a revelation of Christ in us. Because we now move to that place. Where he's returning for the church. Christ is the way. That's why he said to me, open the gates. He is the gates of righteousness. His presence 
His presence will reveal His righteousness. Remember what Paul prayed? He says, I am in travail until Christ is formed in you. Formed out by faith. Ephesians chapter 3. He says, I pray that He may grant you to be strengthened with might by His Spirit in the inner man. <coughs> that Christ may live in your hearts by faith. By the faith of God. That He has given unto us the faith of Christ. We live by the faith of Christ. We now understand, saints, that His presence is a reality. It's real in us. Listen, they tell us God exists. There's, a, there's evidence that God exists. He does not exist. God does not exist. He is existence. He does not exist. He is existence. He's more real than the reality of this world. He's real in me this morning. And Christ is being revealed in me. It becomes impossible to bear fruit without Christ being revealed. And this is what Christ has said. I want to I wanna read this to you. So that you can remember it. Before I close this morning, stop the service. I want you to see this. This is what Christ has given to his disciples because this was going to come to the church, to those that are born again and has become a new creation in Christ Jesus. John chapter 15 verse 1. Listen to what he says. He told them, he taught them, I am the vine and my father is the husband man. Every branch in me that bears not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purchaseth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word. You see, there's the word that's coming in. The word cleans you up so that you may bear fruit. And that's why I'm preaching the word which I have spoken unto you. Now listen what he says. Abide in me. Listen. And I in you. Abide in me and I in you. And only then as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. Except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. You must realize that you are in Him, in the vine. He is the vine. We are the branches of the vine. The branches is the righteousness of the vine. And the fruit that we bear, the vine bear through the branches will now become the fruits of righteousness. Can you see that? That's the only way that we can bring forth fruits of righteousness. When we have His presence and know that He's in us. And that is what Jesus explained to them here that specific day. In verse 11, and I want you to see this this morning, saints. Oh, I bring to you heavenly things. I open to you the oven of heaven. And I bring down on you the words that God has spoken. Listen. <laughs> Let me tell you. When this happens. Real joy will be revealed. Oh, now I'm touching a big thing. Now I'm touching a big thing. Real joy will be revealed. Saints, church, I don't believe that the church know what joy is. They think it's happiness. Happiness is something that's coming in the world. 
that makes people happy from day to day to day. But real joy is supernatural. Joy is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> joy is also the presence of Christ being revealed. Remember that. When fruit is included, the fruit included joy. The fruit that we bear in the vine includes joy, peace, happiness. Not happiness, but the joy of the Lord being brought forth in us. I'm not against people that are happy. Just happy, but just know that happiness is not forever, but the joy which is Christ in us is forever. The kingdom of God is righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. The fruits is faith, joy, peace. All those things is the fruit that we bear because we are in His presence. So, with other words, it's not you bearing it, saints. It's not you trying to do the, bring forth those fruits because you will fail. It's as a result of His presence that is in us that the vine, which is Christ, bear those fruits through us. And there's no effort on our part, but it's coming from Him. Hallelujah. That is what he tells us. In verse 11 of John chapter 15, verse 11, listen to what Jesus said. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy may remain in you, and that your joy may become full. <clears throat> that my joy may remain in you, and your joy may May become full. Now, listen in the Old Testament. Listen what is what he said about the joy of the Lord. In the Old Testament, he said, The joy of the Lord is my strength. God want me to tell you that joy, which is Christ, the only joy, that will be your strength when trouble cometh. That joy will be your strength. When all kinds of things are exploding against you. That will be your strength in a time of trouble. In His presence, in the Old Testament He says, in His presence is fullness of joy. Hallelujah, saints. In His presence is fullness of joy. <laughs> now, in the Old Testament, they are said it. But now His presence is in us. And guess what? My new man, my new creation man, is in his presence all the time. Now, because he's in his presence, I experiencing fullness of joy. Doesn't matter what's going on in this world. Tragedies, all kinds of things. Joy unspeakable and full of glory is being revealed in me. That is what's happening now with us saints. And let me close with this scripture this morning. Let me close with this scripture this morning. In 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Listen to what Paul has said in verse 16. <clears throat> and what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you. And I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and my daughters, saith the Lord Almighty Judge. Can you see that? Can you experience that? 
The difference between the law and Christ was the law is the works outside. The law represented the works outside. Christ in us is doing the works through us. The works of righteousness, the works of God that he is doing through us and in us because it's him doing it. He will and he do it. He wants to do it and then he do it for you. He's the one that's doing it through you. The significance of living faith. What we have now inside us, saints, is living faith. Not dead faith that we are tra uh, attract to us from the outside. <clears throat> but Christ's faith in us is living faith. Now the living faith in you makes Christ's presence real to you on the inside. No devil or demon. Nothing in hell. No principality, no power. Nothing will distract me from what is in me. On Friday, the Lord said to me, and it's not because of me. You can reject it. You can do what you like. But you will one day hear this. On Friday, he spoke a word in my inner man and he said, he gave me a desire to tell you that he's in you. Remember the prophecies, the dreams? That is what God is doing. He's revealing Christ right now. And it's urgent. It's urgent. God reveals Christ in you. And he wants you to know that Christ's, Christ is going to be put on display unto the principalities and powers. And then the wisdom of God, which is Christ, all sides will be revealed unto the principalities. And the powers in the end, the many-sided wisdom of God. The church, the hour has come for the church to put on display the manifold wisdom of Christ, of God, which is Christ in us, the hope of glory. Love you. Thank you for listening to me this morning. And I believe and I pray that you will rise up as one now as the body of Christ and Put on display everything that is on the inside of you so that we may please God in everything that, I do, that we do. And you're going to see his hand in action in Jesus' name. Love you. Appreciate you. Have a wonderful week until we see you again. Amen. Amen. Bye-bye. <laughs>